Hi, I'm Tava Singer from CaliQuiltCo.com, and today I'm going to show you how I put quilt binding on all by machine, no hand sewing. So first of all, we have these brand new June Taylor Quilt As You Go battings. And these are fun. This is like color by number when you were a little kid, but now it's sew by number. And so I sewed together my quilt that I have right here, and I want to put on this cute little orange binding to go with it. And so I have all of my strips, and I like to cut mine to be two and a half inches wide. Everybody has their own opinion. Some people like two inches, some swear by two and a quarter. I like two and a half. The first thing I need to do is connect this into one big long strip. And so I'll open up my first one. And I'm going to start right sides together. And I'm just going to cover them up like this. So I have one going horizontal, the other going vertical, and then I'm going to draw a line and I just want to check that it opens up like this so that it's going all in one direction and that I don't sew it going this way. And so now that I have that set, I want to just draw a line. So I'm going, actually here, let me put a pin in first. I'll pin this side. And now I'm going to draw a line across the diagonal and I'm going to sew right on my line. Now that I have my line marked, I hope you can see that. It's kind of dark. I bring it over to my machine. As soon as I turn my machine on, it automatically defaults to 2.5. I like that. I change it so much with cuddle, but with sewing cotton, I leave it right where it is. Needle down and sew. So as you notice, I didn't do any back tacking. You don't have to. You can if you want. I'm going to pop out my pins, and now I'm going to trim this. I want to trim it so that it's about a quarter of an inch uh, seam allowance and trim off your other threads. Keep trimming your threads as you go. Some people will say, ah, it doesn't matter. It matters a ton. It <laughs> matters a lot. You want it to be really nice looking and finished. So again, I'm going to repeat this process and put all of my strips together. I'll first put in a little pin to hold that. Bring over my ruler. This is also the time where I really appreciate having a nice little ruler. This is from Creative Grids. This is the one and a half by six and a half inch ruler. And I love this little size instead of having my big long monster ruler to try to do some little tiny fine piece. I can put a second pin in to just really hold that. Come over to my machine. Now, the question can become, why, does, why do we have to do it at an angle? Why do we need to do it that way? Why can't we just leave it all together or do a straight one? And the reason you're going to see as we sew this quilt binding on, but if I did just straight seams, then I'd have a really super bulky part on my binding. And so my binding wouldn't be nice and smooth. It'd be smooth, smooth, bulky, smooth, <laughs> bulky. And so this, this evens it out and it spreads out all that bulk. It makes a big difference really nice finished product. Again, it's that difference between having something that looks homemade or handmade. Both are made with love, both count, both are amazing. But if we're putting all of our time and money into making something, we want it to look handcrafted. We want that handmade look. Okay. Now, if you're making a really big quilt, you're going to be sewing a lot of pieces all together. And that's okay. You just take the time that it takes to get them all put together and cut, sewn together. Do I have everything trimmed? There we go. Okay, now that it's all trimmed, let me get this out of the way. I'm gonna bring it over to the ironing table. Now, on my ironing board, I have this really cool felted wool mat, and I love it because it helps to iron it from the back side as well. It is not necessary. You can sew this just with any old regular ironing board or even an ironing blanket, but the more that you sew, the more you're going to want some nice things, and this is where it saves you a lot of time with ironing because it's ironing from the bottom up just as much as I'm ironing from the top down. 
you can get all different sizes. You can get a nice little eight by eight inch square. I like this big one. This one's called the monster board because it's so big and I can iron a lot all at once. And so I love that. Now, when we get here, when you don't have butter fingers like I do right now. Okay, we open this up and we wanna iron that nice and flat. Okay, iron it flat and now we iron it in half. And you'll do that over each of those little seams that you sewed. You see how that spreads out the bulk there? It makes such a difference on your finished quilt. There are lots of different ways to do a quilt. You can do sew and flip where you don't have to put binding on. But for me, I recommend practice this. Make yourself some placemats and practice doing a lot of binding so that you get over it. It doesn't feel scary and hard, but binding is, you're gonna see when I show you my quilt, it's a way to really make something pop. And I like spicy bindings on things. I like to take a small color out of a quilt and put that as my binding and really make it sing. And it pulls things, different views, different looks, different colors out of your quilt. It's fun. So I just iron that flat and now I iron it in half. So now that we have the pile of binding all complete, I want to start to pin it onto my quilt. Well, okay, I don't actually want to pin. That's what normal people do. I'll show you what I do, okay. So with my quilt, let's see, that's the bottom, here's the top. So this again is one of the June Taylor quilt as you go um, battings that's like sew by number. We had color by number as little kids, now we sew by number. And so we sell this as a kit if you don't wanna have to think about the fabrics. We have all the fabrics put together for you. And you can see like, this is pretty. It's really cool fabrics. I mean, it's a very simple, simple design, um, but that's also what's fun in modern quilting is you let this, the fabric do the talking, okay? So you can see, very, very pretty. But then as soon as I bring out that splash of orange, do you see how it pulls the orange out of the quilt? I love that, I love that a lot. So I call that a spicy binding. Now, what I like to do is I like to do all of my binding 100% on the machine. And so instead of traditional where you sew your binding onto the front, flip it around and hand sew it onto the back, instead I start by sewing it onto the back. So I'm gonna begin here, find one end of my binding, and I'm gonna leave a nice long tail. I don't know, that's probably about 12 inches of tail. And I'll leave it right about here. And I'll just pin this on to hold that. And then instead of pinning or clipping all of my binding on, I just take my binding and put it in my lap and sew. So, as I bring this all over, again, I'm gonna sew my binding onto the back and I leave this tail totally loose. I do not sew it down. So I bring it over to the edge and this is where I have the choice I could be using a walking foot, and I instead prefer to just use my regular quarter inch foot, but I increase my stitch length from 2.5 to 3.5, because as I'm going through thicker layers, if I have to rip something out, if I have that tiny little stitch, they get even closer together with thick layers. And as you can tell, I've ripped a lot of things out, and so I don't want to do that. Okay, I'll do a nice little back tack at the beginning. I'm gonna put a lot of strain on that when I come back to it. So I want that to be nice and strong. And then I just grab a piece in my hand and sew. And I just make sure that I help it along from the back. I'm not pulling this. I'm not putting stress or strain on my needle as I'm sewing, but I just like to help the fabric through because this is a lot for this little machine to push through. And so I'm sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance here which with a quarter inch foot, it's right on the edge or the, right on the side of my, my, my foot. The other nice thing as you can see is I have all this extra space. It helps keep the weight of that quilt from falling on the floor beside you or pulling down where you're having to use your upper body strength to hold it up onto the table. No fun. This is a time where it's really great to go. If you have a small, tiny uh, sewing table like I do at home, this is a great time to then go and uh, move to the dining room table. Now, when we get down here to a quarter inch, I'm going to sew off at a diagonal. And so now that I'm getting closer, because I didn't pin all the way around, so I couldn't pre-mark thing. I'm just gonna use my ruler. And once I am at a quarter of an inch here, I'm just gonna mark that spot, okay? Now I'll sew down to this spot here. 
and then I'll stop with my needle in, and then I'm going to just pivot and I'm going to sew off the corner. Once I do that, snip it. Now the tricky part. To get that really cool mitered corner look, I'm first going to pull this up. So this is where when I sewed off the corner, that helped um, to keep this at a nice tight diagonal. It's sewn down. So I'm gonna sew it up and then I'm gonna hold it with my finger here right at the edge and I'm gonna bring it down here and meet up again with the side of the quilt. And so this time I'm actually gonna put in just a couple of pins because I wanna hold that nice and exact. Then I sew. I also will begin down a quarter of an inch. So I don't start at this exact uh, end here. I'll start right here at a quarter inch. Okay, I don't have to back tack here, but I will just do that just for good measure. Take out my second pin. And then again, I pull from the back as I sew from the front. I'm not pulling with lots of pressure. It's just gentle, like helping that fabric through. As you can see, as I'm handling this binding, I'm getting a lot of little whiskers, um, and that doesn't matter at all with those whiskers. You're gonna see, it'll all be contained, but I do wanna point that out. That's not a bad thing. I didn't do anything wrong. That's just what happens with the fabric as I'm touching it. <laughs> Woven fabric, when you have a raw cut edge, uh, it likes to just fray like that. Not a big deal. Okay, now I'm approaching another end. I'm gonna sew till I get a little bit closer. And then now that I have it here, I'm going to again, take my, my ruler. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see it better. I'm gonna take my ruler and a quarter of an inch from the end, I'm just gonna put a little line. When I sew to that point, I will needle down and angle and come off the corner. Needle down. And now I'll sew off the corner. Perfect. Snip. Now again, to pivot, I have my, my strip of binding. I'm gonna pull it up, then hold that in place with my finger and come down. And I'll put a couple of pins in to hold that. Get the bulk of your, your quilt weight up on that table so you're not spending any of your energy to hold it in place. Okay, and again, as I get closer, I'm going to stop and mark a quarter inch from the edge. I'll sew up to that spot. Needle down and I'll sew off the corner. Clip it. Then I bring this all the way up. Hold that nice and tight. Bring this down. Couple of pins. As you can see, it gets very redundant as you're doing the same thing on every corner. And I'll tell you, this used to really scare me and freak me out. I used to beg my mom to do my binding for me, true story. I would send things to her. I would beg one of my sisters to finish things because like it didn't matter how many pictures or tutorials, my mom tried so hard for me. She would send me so many things out of different magazines or books like, you can do this. I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And, um, then finally I decided I was not gonna have that fear anymore and I was just gonna learn how to do it. And so a set of placemats, you know, if you do a set of six, you get really, really good. Ah. 
Another thing if you don't want a placemat is you can make cute little mug mats too. It's the same thing, anything where you can sew. Coming up to my final corner, dun dun dun. Okay, I'm gonna pause. I'm going to mark my quarter of an inch, my last quarter of an inch. I'll sew up to my mark and then sew off the corner. And now this time it's gonna be a little bit different. So I'm going to pull this up and straight up like this, hold it, pull it down. But this time I'm not gonna start sewing right away. I could, I could sew until I get closer to my original starting point, but instead I'm gonna put in several pins nice and close to really hold this. And then what has worked for me, what my magic number is when I'm doing two and a half inch strips for my binding is I like them to overlap exactly two inches, okay? So now in this case, I have this big nice long tail, which you'll thank me later when you don't save two inches, you'll be like, oh, I understand why we, sa <laughs> uh, <laughs> why we save this big long 12 inch tail. When you don't do that sometime, you'll understand why. <laughs> so not super fun. All right, so we get this part and I'm just gonna come out to about here where I've got lots of room here, okay? And I'm gonna just trim it straight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this tail down and I don't wanna stretch this at all, but I just wanna make sure it's pulled nice and taut. And as you can see, I'm now overlapping. So I wanna overlap two inches right here and then I'm gonna make it a, a little sign, or a little uh, mark right here, and that's where I'm going to trim. So I cut my binding. Now with these two pieces, I'm going to put them together and join them. Having done this wrong many times, I now, instead of just sewing, being like, I think I'm pretty sure it's close, I check it, okay? And so with this, I have my first pin in to hold it where I do want it to be. And now I'm gonna just put in another pin right about where that angle will be. And then I check, yes, perfect. Nothing is twisted. So you can tell I'm the pro of ripping this out because I've done it wrong so many times, okay? So I check it because I wanna make sure I don't have some weird twist in it or have something going the wrong way. Done it too many times. Okay, so I got that correct this time, yay. And now what I'll do is I'll get a second pin in to hold this down here. And then I'm gonna draw my sewing line again. So it goes from corner to corner. Here's my other corner. Again, a nice little light line is all you need. I'm making mine a little bit darker so you can see it. And now I'm going to sew that. This time, I'm gonna put a lot of strain on this, so I am in a back tack. What I mean by strain is I'm gonna be pulling on it pretty tough, pretty hard. So uh, that's why I wanna back tack and really hold those uh, first few stitches in place. Now, again, check it. <laughs> Having done this wrong, check. Okay, still correct. Okay, at this point, I can rip it out and redo it if I've made a big mistake and twisted something. So again, you wanna check that. And now that it's correct, and if you cut it off, trust me, you can fix it. You just take your extra ends that you threw away and you'll sew them back on and you'll just have an extra seam. It's not a big deal, okay? The world goes on. Um, and just because I like the way it looks, I'm actually gonna come over here and iron this one down. You do not have to, you could just finger press it. But since I have my iron plugged in and hot, why not? Okay, so now, as you can see, it is a little bit tight, a little bit tight, and that's okay. I actually would rather have it tight than loose because loose means I'm gonna have a weird pucker in there. And so now with this, I just can stretch and just give it a little tug. So this is where with two and a half inch binding, my two inches gives me a nice clean look. Anytime I try to change that from two inches, I have a little bit too much extra and I get to where I'm trying to finish my seam and I get this. 
this like little tuck pucker and it bugs me. So this little tuck pucker happens anytime I change those. And so this, these are my dimensions and why I do that, okay? But I'll take out a few extra of these pins. Apparently I'm gonna pull a bunch of other mess here. Okay, let's get those threads. All right, and now we're gonna sew our final part of this side of the binding. I wait to get my pin in, or my needle in before I lift up that pin, just so nothing can move on me. Now that I have that, I'm gonna keep my needle down and I'm going to be pulling this nice and taut. I'm going to kind of find this middle point so that I'm not doing all the stretch at the end. And I go over my initial start point just to make it a nice fluid, seamless line. Okay, so now that I have all that done, I'm ready to actually sew the front binding on. And so now this time I'm actually going to start at a corner. Before I wanted to start away from a corner because a corner is a tough place to turn a corner and join a seam. And again, I actually don't pin or clip this. <laughs> I, um, in the beginning, I actually recommend gluing. You could take a glue stick. We sell these Roxanne uh, glue sticks. We have a liquid glue. I like the glue stick. You could put a little bit of glue with a glue stick. It's nice and neat and tidy. And then fold these over and clip. Um, some people like to fold them over and pin. I like to just, I wanna get it done. So I just fold it over and sew as I go. Um, and it works for me. Give it a try. I think it'll work for you too. Okay, so as you can see, I have all these little whiskers now that have come out and that's okay, no big deal, but I do wanna tuck them in, okay? So I just keep tucking all those little whiskers in and go nice and slow. At this point, you've heard how fast I can sew, <laughs> but um, this is not a race here. Just take your time, you want it to look good. Now this binding is fitting on really nice and tight. It's a nice full binding, um, but you may find that there comes a point in time that it's not fitting. You're trying to bring your binding around and it doesn't fit to the other side and you feel like you have to kind of roll this. And it's just because for whatever reason, your seam allowance got off and it, all of a sudden it got wider than it was supposed to be. And so in that case there, you're just gonna take your scissors and trim it. It doesn't matter. No one's gonna see that. It's all hidden, it's beautiful. But so take and just trim this so that you get it back to your quarter inch and then your binding will fit all the way around it again. That seems like common sense, but that didn't occur to me. When I was first sewing, I was like, no, I must roll it. I must make it fit. No, you actually don't. No one's gonna know. And no one's also gonna care. You're not gonna give some a quilt be like, yeah, it was great, except for that part where I rolled the binding. <laughs> Please don't say that. I've already clipped that part. And so <laughs> with this, I'm just trimming all of these in or pushing all my little uh, loose ends in. I'm gonna get all the way to the corner and then I'll show you this part here. So now when I get to this corner, to get this mitered corner, I'm gonna pull that down nice and flat. I'm gonna kind of hold it in place and then bring this side up. Now I want that to tuck, so I'll tuck right there. And so I'm just folding that corner in place as you can see. And now I have that perfect looking little mitered corner. So I'll hold everything tight with my stiletto. This is where for years I used to try to use a pin to hold that nice and in place by the stiletto. You'll end up buying one anyway. Buy one, it makes your life a lot happier. And it makes your binding look a lot better. More whiskers, plug them in, tuck them in.
Okay, now this time as I'm getting closer, I have my tails from the first time. So I just trim those, bring this over again, hold that nice and tight with my stiletto and fold the corner up. Once it's folded, I put my stiletto right into that and sew. the home stretch. Okay, so I'm going to come trim this. And now before I get too close, I just wanna make sure that I have my angle just right here. This is where if you can see nice and close, you see how I actually like dig into the fabric and kind of pull, love this tool, love this tool. And just to make it really secure, I will actually get right in and I'll turn the corner and just sew a couple of stitches and back tack. Boom, that is binding. So with this, again, binding makes your quilt just really pop. I love doing all machine binding because I'm allergic to hand sewing. It makes me break out in hives and cuss words, it's bad. And so I absolutely love sewing quilts, making quilts for people, especially baby gifts. It's so much fun. And putting on that pop of color, you can see how it just really highlights and brings out all of the orange in this, and it just really breaks it up. It's fun. So I'm Tava Singer from CaliQuiltCo.com. This was my binding tutorial. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. Please share it in your sewing groups, and hopefully we'll be back to make you more. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Happy sewing.